Once the Civil War ended, the North had had a rather large problem on its hands, and that was what to do with hundreds of thousands of soldiers who had died fighting for the Union during the Civil War. And it was decided pretty early on that the nation needed to begin establishing national cemeteries. This is the first time this was ever done, cemeteries specifically uh, to uh, house the remains of soldiers who had died fighting for uh, the Union cause. And so starting in 1866, the quartermaster department started sending out officers throughout the country to locate the Union remains, specifically in the south where most of the battles had been, to find out initially just how much of a problem there was, how many unburied dead were there. And to do that, they uh, had a special group of men called the Burial Corps. And it's kind of a, a group that we don't really know too much about. It was a civilian group that was uh, administered by the quartermaster department of the army. And these people, sometimes they were former slaves, sometimes they were immigrants, sometimes they were former Union soldiers, sometimes they were even former Confederate soldiers, uh, would, uh, would be hired to go out and find the bodies on the battlefield. And so these groups would go out and then they would spread out over a battlefield or a campground, usually several paces apart and almost like a skirmish line, would comb the battlefields uh, looking for bodies. And when they found a body, the man in charge of the party would then mark it. Uh, they would disinter the body, try to see if there was any identification on it. Many of the soldiers by 1865 when the war ended uh, were not identified. Even if they had been identified after the battle with maybe a small headboard, a lot of times those headboards simply weren't around uh, a couple of years later once this burial process started. Sometimes uh, animals would kick them over, uh, sometimes uh, local people would pick them up and, and use them for firewood. So by the time the burial process started, the large majority of the soldiers buried here could not be identified. Here at Fredericksburg, about 84% of those buried here are considered unknown dead. It seems strange to us today that uh, the government would only want to bury Union soldiers and not Confederate soldiers. But again, keep in mind this is immediately after a very long, bitter war in which hundreds of thousands of men died. There was hardly a person, even either north or south, who hadn't had a brother, a cousin, a father, a son, who had been killed in this fighting. And so feelings were still rather, uh, rather harsh from one side to the other. And so it's not surprising then that when uh, the time came to rebury soldiers, that the northern government was not inclined to pay for the burial of southern soldiers whom they viewed as traitors. As soon as you enter a cemetery, one of the first things you'll find is a stone or brick lodge uh, next to the entrance, and that was used to house the superintendent whose job it was to take care of the cemetery. As you move up into the cemetery, you'll almost always find a flagpole, uh, often near the, the entrance or near the center of the cemetery. You'll find, of course, the graves made out of usually some sort of stone. You will find certain ornamental features like stanzas from Theodora O'Hara's poem, Bivouac of the Dead. Uh, you'll usually find at least one or two monuments. Another thing you'll find are these uh, upright cannon. They were put in in the 1880s. Again, it was a standard thing that was done at almost every national cemetery. Also around the 1880s, you, f you had uh, a plaque with the Gettysburg Address on it put into most of these cemeteries. Some features have gone over the years, but by and large, you'll find most of these features in most of the cemeteries.